Well, we have seen how far these terrorists are going to go to kill us, to kill our children. So how far should our president, President Trump, go to destroy them? Here to react to this and to his message this morning, our panel, we have Ryan Morrow that is with the Clarion Project, national security analyst, and we have former Pen Pentagon official Michael Makovsky. Thank you both for being with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Ryan, how do you answer that? We've seen how far these terrorists are going to go. What does our president need to go to, to obliterate them in his words? Sure. Well, we saw him speaking in Saudi Arabia, and there were some moments that were real standouts. I would say it was the closest he might come to a tear down this wall moment. Uh, but it was a call to action, not a plan to action. Uh, we needed to have the Islamist ideology and its infrastructure dismantled. I want to hear a plan about how to stop the mosques, the radical funding of those mosques, I mean, the, the radical Islamic schools. Uh, but some of the language that you just saw was also very helpful when he's calling the terrorists losers that's actually impactful because it's this idea of success that enables them to recruit and say Allah is blessing us all right so Michael what what does the president's plan need to be then look I think is the, the president's rhetoric and the symbolism of the trip has been excellent to translate that into policy I think he needs to uh, confront our dubious allies in this fight against terror for instance in Riyadh he met the Qatari uh, head and I think we need to tell the Qataris that if they continue to support terrorism and and uh, radical Islam then we'll relocate our military assets from that country that is protecting them and I think to the Palestinian Authority he needs to tell them that if they continue to sponsor finance and reward terror that we're going to reduce our the several hundred millions of dollars of aid that we give them mm -hmm. Well, Benjamin Netanyahu did touch on that, and so did our exactly. president. I know you're the CEO of the Jewish Institute for the National Security of America. The yes. president was there at the, at the Holocaust Memorial, at the, Israeli, at the Israel Museum, and also, as we've seen, with the Prime Minister of Israel. Did he have a strong enough message to the Palestinian Prime Minister after he went into the West Bank area and did meet with him? I think his message was pretty good publicly which is that he he made he highlighted this issue that the Palestinian Authority is uh, is rewarding terror and now I think privately they need to follow the administration needs to follow up with the Palestinians and say look we're going to support this Taylor Force Act in Congress we're going to cut our aid to you if you don't change your behavior and your rhetoric Ryan I know you're a professor of counterterrorism and you're teaching classes on this what would be your advice to the president to make sure something like this Ariana Grande concert doesn't happen here? Well, again, I would say it goes back to dismantling the Islamist infrastructure, reassessing our allies such as Turkey and Qatar is very important, but also don't allow people like the leader of the Palestinian Authority to lie to you uh, when he says that he's creating a culture of peace for the children. That is a lie. It's not spin, a difference of opinion. It is a lie, and we need to respond How to it. How do you change that, that ideology, though? Well, first of all, you can cut off funding to these entities that are brainwashing children. And we have to look at the polls. Just look at the polls. When you look at Palestinian opinion, they not, the majority not only desire the destruction of Israel, they believe it is possible. And that's because of the concessions that they get in response to their violence. Yeah, they're teaching kids. They're teaching kids at an early age to do this and to be terrorists. But why are we still funding them, Ryan? political correctness, diplomatic pressure. You have uh, allies that we are dependent upon that will say, well, you have to do this. It comes from this idea that terrorism is a byproduct of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, uh, when really it's the reverse. The reason that we have this ongoing Israeli-Palestinian conflict and so many other conflicts is because it is fueled by radical Islam and ferocious anti-Semitism. Remember, even before the state of Israel was established, you had the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Hajjamin al-Husseini, allying with Hitler. So this goes way back and is very deep, and there has to be a detox of the societies that are infected with this anti-Semitism and this radicalism. All right. Ryan, Michael, thank you both for being with thank us. You. We're going to have more on the breaking news this morning, the attack, the terrorist attack at the Ariana Grande concert. Also, Alan Dershowitz and the man who killed Osama bin Laden, Rob O'Neill. They are both here to react straight ahead. There is nothing more important to me than my vacation. So when I need to book a hotel room, I want someone that makes it easy.